What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we have yet another Talking Head video. Today we're going to be talking about why Ethereum mining profits are down. The short of it provided by Tim Bako on a call earlier this week, which is in full on this YouTube channel, if you want to check out the link down in the description, is that Flashbots is taking the arbitrage process regarding MEV off chain. And that's kind of the short of it. We'll get into more details right after a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is CDK Deals. To get great deals on Windows 10 Pro keys, check out the links in the description. To activate, it's as simple as going to cdkdeals.com using the link in the description and then searching for Windows 10 Pro. From here, you just need to click buy now. Then you can sign up for a quick and easy account. Don't forget to type in your promo code, which is SOT20, and click Submit Order. From here, you can pay with FastPay, PayPal, credit card, etc. Once you have completed your purchase, head on over to the User Center. Once processing is complete, you will be able to get your key to activate Windows. Your key will be located in your account under My Purchased Orders. You will click View Keys and Codes, Click get the key, and then you will copy the code. Next, head on over to Windows, search in Cortana for activation settings. Click on change product key, and use control V to paste the code into the box. Click next, then click activate, and your copy of Windows will be activated. No more pesky watermark. To get 20% off your Windows 10 Pro purchase, don't forget to check out the affiliate link down in the description and use promo code SOT20 when signing up. Welcome back. So to understand why mining profits are down, we kind of need to understand why mining profits were so high at the beginning of the year and the end of 2020. And this is really revolving around the concept of MEV, as well as the DeFi applications or decentralized finance. Things like Uniswap on layer one were increasing activity on the network, which was increasing the amount of fees because as people were trying to get their trades in, they would go in and increase the their fees to go ahead and get their trade to go in first. Basically is all you really need to know about that. Now, as far as MEV goes, that is minor extractable value. It was also known as maximal extracted value. And what it is at the end of the day is arbitrage and front running. If you are familiar with, of course, the trading markets, you should be kind of familiar with this concept, but essentially think of it like this. If you have a big whale that comes in to make a transaction and you want to get your trade in first, you would borrow something, maybe borrow some Ethereum, put your trade in before that, drive the transaction fees and the price of Ethereum up before the whale goes in, and then right after that kind of sell it back to them at a higher price. Essentially doing, of course, what would maybe be similar to shorting when we are taking a look at like GME or AMC. Now, what has happened here recently is, of course, a few things. And the number one thing that Tim Baker thinks is causing fees to come down is the off-chain implementation of arbitrage and front running essentially due to flashbots. Now, flashbots here, just to give you guys an idea, a brief introduction, is a research and development organization working on mitigating the negative externalities of current MEV extraction. MEV could stand for maximal extracted value or minor extractable value. And avoiding the existential risks MEV could cause to the state-rich blockchains like Ethereum. Our primary focus is to enable permissionless, transparent, and fair ecosystem for MEV extraction. And then they plan to achieve this by bringing transparency to MEV activity, democratizing access to MEV revenue, enabling redistribution of MEV revenue in a way that benefits the community. Now, there are a lot of definitions here, and if we would like to go into a, an in-depth kind of video regarding flashbots, please let me know, but I will leave a link to this down in the description below so you have some reading material to kind of catch up on what's been happening. 
Now, the thing is, is what they've done, uh, according to Tim Bako, is they have taken this process offline or, or off chain, meaning that essentially the only transactions that are being paid out to miners in this process now is that final kind of extraction or that final winner of whatever the bid is so essentially what happens is is you get this sort of bidding war for people to get their transactions inserted into the block in the position that they want it in whether that's front running or back burning or whatever that may be basically what you are talking about is a manipulation of the sorting of the transactions within the block so that some get solved before others or others get solved after some and this is basically used within trading markets etc to increase profits and the process initially as a, at a very basic idea was that people would be getting into bidding wars which would be increasing the fees on the network and all of that would get bundled into the block and then that payout would go to the miners because all of those transactions or that bidding war would be recorded on the chain with the implementation of the solution that Flashbots has presented with taking that kind of bid war off chain is that those additional fees aren't going in for that bid war, only the final one. And this basically makes it more profitable for traders and easier, but it also reduces the rewards for, of course, miners. So that's what we're seeing here go on. Now, if you took a look at the blocks here currently, just to give you guys an idea, you can see here with the ethermine on etherchain.org that the current average block rewards are somewhere between two and 2.5 Ethereum. And that's pretty consistent all the way down. We talked about how this will also make EIP 1559 not as impactful as initially anticipated of that 30 to 40% decrease in mining profits because at this point what you would see is the two base block reward and then after that you would see for example maybe on a 2.4 you would see 0.2 of it going to the tip and 0.2 of it being burned for the base fee just an idea and that would only decrease profits after 1559 by 15 percent so needless to say if you're doing well on ethereum right now or in profit that's actually kind of good news because it's a more stable system for you to be predicting your profits further on down the line especially now that we have 1559 coming out it won't be as big of an impact as initially anticipated another case that i wanted to discuss is of course layer two solutions as well as sidechain solutions so layer two solutions are basically taking the trading or the DeFi stuff off of the layer one and because of that those transactions aren't being run on layer one which means the fees aren't being distributed to the miners another thing is like the off-chain layer two type stuff like matic polygon which to clarify it is a side chain technically and i wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that and i learned that this week in the call with tim bako but essentially because it's a side chain anything that's being interacted with on matic or polygon network is basically not going to translate into fees that are paid out to miners because it's a separate network. So all of this compounding into what we see today, which is this average block reward of two to 2.5. And this is because basically the Ethereum block reward is two. And then as far as the transaction fees go, they are really low, sitting somewhere between, uh, for an entire block between nothing to 0.5 ethereum and this is significantly different than it was earlier this year where there were crazy times where you know the average block reward was 9 or 10 ethereum as people were trying to get into DeFi. so will the mining profits come back before eth moves to proof of stake and what i'm seeing here is no and that's because the technologies that have been implemented with 
of course, flash bots along with layer two and side chains like Polygon are relevant, functioning, and being used primarily. So I wouldn't see any sort of huge increase in Ethereum layer one transaction fees taking place anytime soon. And that's going to be where we sit at. What should you be thinking about in preparation? Well, you should be taking a look at what to mine, seeing if there are other coins that are more profitable and maybe making that switch. I say that, but to be honest, it is possible that with the increase in price of Ethereum, with the implementations coming, that just mining and holding Ethereum will end up being the better play in the long run and just milking it for whatever is left in it for the miners itself. I do wanna do a follow-up video talking about the miner influence on, of course, the markets, because if we've taken a look at the past cycles regarding Bitcoin, it is clear that miners do directly influence the price of cryptocurrencies. And what I'm going to be putting together is basically my thoughts and opinions on Ethereum moving to proof of stake and how that may positively and alternatively negatively impact Ethereum's price because it is going to be kind of interesting as mining has been the lowest barrier to entry for people into cryptocurrency and especially into Ethereum and different altcoins. And I think that it's going to be interesting to see how the miners react if the miners move into the new ecosystem with proof of stake. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. Are you planning on staking Ethereum that you've mined and continuing on there? Or are you looking at different altcoins or even looking at getting into mining Bitcoin with some ASICs? What are you guys thinking? Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can watch more by clicking this playlist up here or go ahead and subscribe.